I was coming from a web background. And so one of the big problems with Bitcoin was that it was very inaccessible, right? And so um, I worked on a re-implementation in JavaScript. And the idea was that you could have the user experience of like a My Bitcoin, but have your own keys and have everything signed client side. And there are limitations to doing cryptography in the browser, especially at that time. A lot of people were like, this is irresponsible, you shouldn't do this. Um, I think now it's a little bit more accepted. Um, but I knew that there were ways to do it reasonably safely. Um, and also I, I knew there was an improvement over my Bitcoin and like people always use what's convenient. So I was working on this re-implementation and I ended up getting so obsessed with it. Like, you know, sometimes you just, you just, you have some problem or some project you're working on and it just takes up your whole life. And so I would like fall asleep on the keyboard and like wake up with the keys imprinted on my face and things like that. And I just like, I ate the absolute necessary, minimum necessary amount and, and slept the absolute minimum necessary amount, just coded on Bitcoin all day, um, on Bitcoin JS. Um, and so as a result, I became uh, one of the first, I think the first person to re-implement Bitcoin, including mining, including the script interpreter, like the entire thing from scratch. Um, and so that gives you a lot of information or a lot of insight into how it works and like what are some of the limitations and things like that. And there was another guy who uh, worked on a Bitcoin re-implementation, Russell, um, and then of course Mike Hearn who worked on Bitcoin J. And so that group of us became sort of an important sounding board for the core team. Um, when it came to like protocol changes because it's like, you know, you have different implementations You want to make sure that from these different perspectives the protocol change makes sense um, So I ended up working on pay to script hash and I remember there was like it was like New Year's Eve and Gavin had proposed some uh, Solution for pay to script hash and I was like that doesn't work and he's like yeah it works and I'm like I'll prove that it doesn't work and so I was, would stay up and like my New Year's Eve party was like staying up till 2 a.m. to make a counterexample to show Gavin was wrong. Um, and uh, but he was always like a great person to work with and so um, yeah I, I was able to influence like some protocol features in, this, in a small way. I can always compare re-implementations to think of an engine and you like take it apart screw by screw and then you put it back together. You know, and so it's like you really know where every screw is and what, what everything does. And it was things like, it was in re-implementations that created like most of the documentation on the wiki. I think a lot of uh, that is credit to Mike, you know, uh, because he had to reverse engineer the source code to understand how it works. And then so he left a lot of documentation for other people. Um, and then also you find some of the weird quirks, like there's this one opcode that pops one too many things off the stack. And so people never notice that. It's the, I think it's the check multisig opcode. Um, and people never noticed that until they did a re-implementation and it was like, why does it not work? And like, oh, there's an extra opcode that Bitcoin pops off the stack. So I guess that's just part of the standard now, you know? Um, so it's these like weird, what would be normally a bug, but because it's so hard to change a protocol that's live that people are running all over the world, um, it becomes just a quirk in the spec.